It was an incredible moment. I wished everyone could have seen it. Congressman Ron Paul knows his stuff. And he said to Bernanke, how do you define a dollar? Now that's a really loaded question for, for constitutional scholars. They know that Jefferson defined a dollar as um, this many grains of gold or this many grains of, of silver. So Ron Paul knew exactly what he was doing when he said to the head of our central bank, how do you define a dollar? And the amazing answer the chairman Bernanke gave was, well, a dollar is uh, it's what it will buy. That's the opposite of what the founders had in mind. It's, it's not what it buys moment to moment. A dollar is a measure. It's, it's specific. For an agency that was created in 1913 to play a very passive role of temporarily providing liquidity, now the Fed is this, this behemoth. So this government agency decides what is the, the value of the dollar, and their idea is that uh, if it loses two or three percent a year, no problem. They have decided that, that a little bit of inflation is just fine. They refer to benign inflation. For a government that was set up to protect private property rights, I, I think it's highly immoral. Of all things that shouldn't be floating, I think a unit of account, a measure, is the most important. A measure has to be fixed, has to be constant. Instead of having more government control over money, more ability to manipulate it to cover the sins of government, what we should do is go back to the intentions of the founders. I'm really building on an idea of issuing treasury obligations redeemable in gold. Let's say the U.S. Treasury announces a new instrument. You, as the holder of this instrument, if you buy it today, We'll either get $2,400 or an ounce of gold. We would begin to link the value of the dollar in the future to, to gold. Let's put a marker out there. Have the treasury issue five-year notes where at, at the end of five years, uh, you could redeem in gold. Gold is a legacy of what had always been the anchor for U.S. money.